Behind me are the magnificent Cambrian Mountains, the backbone of Wales, extending from the Brecon Beacons in the south, up the Elenydd and the Elam Valley behind me, all the way up to Plinlimon and beyond. It's the last true wilderness in Wales, and it's where I escape to when I'm looking for peace and solitude. I've been fortunate enough to walk these mountains for the last three decades, enjoying the landscape and the wildlife. But it's an area under threat. Threats such as rural depopulation, off-roading and, more recently, wind farms. I'm honoured to be president of the Cambrian Mountain Society and we feel very strongly that this area must be protected. That's why we've commissioned this film. I hope you enjoy it. In the very heart of Wales, there is a region of the country that is unlike any other, in Wales or Britain. It is not always conventionally pretty, it has a character and a personality of its own. It is one of the last places in Europe where you can find silence, isolation, an empty landscape. But this is no desolate wilderness. For those who know the mountains, they can seem lovely beyond the singing of it. The Cambrian Mountains have been for more than 2,000 years a place where people have lived and worked. They still do. This is a living countryside. And yet, the Cambrian Mountains are little known. It is as if they were kept a secret. When people talk about Wales, they seem to talk about uh, Snowdonia and uh, the Brecon Beacons, but uh, the Cambrian Mountains doesn't seem so, so widely known. Uh, I don't know why. It's, uh, perhaps the, the Cambrian Mountain name hasn't really been pushed forward, you know. Clive Myhill is a farmer, and he knows the mountains well. I farm in the old uh, Powys County of Radnorshire. Uh, I look on to the Cambrian Mountains every day, and uh, that's why I've uh, gained a, a love of the Cambrian Mountains, really. It's the wilderness, I think. Possibly the last wilderness left in England and Wales, but having said that, the not a true wilderness because you can see man's footprint on in various places, the reservoirs, the forestry as we have over there and various mining projects that have fallen by the wayside in the past. So um, that's generally why I like them because you can uh, walk for a whole day and not see another person. Or you've only got the red kite and some Welsh mountain sheep for company and I think that's absolutely great in this life. This is an area of huge contrasts. Not just agriculture has left its mark on the hills. The hand of man is everywhere to see. People used to mine here for lead, for zinc, for gold.
No one knows the land here better than Ray Woods. It's the peace and the quiet that people so desire these days. Where do you get it? As soon as you go over a few miles to the east here, you're into the Mealair. There's only a little bit of Herefordshire left, a bit of Northumberland left, and the whole of England, which has this wonderful quiet solitude that you can appreciate in the, in the, in the Cambrian Mountains. They are a truly wonderful part of the world. I mean, wherever you go, there's something of interest. I mean, even the old mine sites, for example, support the most extraordinary range of, 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 of organisms, organisms that you know, we might very well need in the near future. We're turning some of the metal mine sites now into what we describe as important plant areas. They're internationally important. It's got wonderful bogs. It's got the most extraordinary temperate rainforest in the woodlands. You don't need to go abroad if you want to see rainforests. Come to the Cambrian Mountains, dripping with mosses and lichens. A wonderful sight. Locals and visitors alike respond to the challenge of walking on such untouched territory. These walkers are high on the central plateau which crowns the mountains. They are unlikely to meet another soul. If they do, it is likely to be this man, Kendua Jones, shepherd. This is home to him and his wife. Well, I used to come around here um, a few years ago, like on horseback and all that, and uh, then I really liked the place. It was so remote and so left alone, I think. I, I, well, apparently nobody had lived here for about 60 years before I came here. Um, so. It, there was an attraction then, and I sort of, when the chance came to be a shepherd for the Ellen Valley Trust, I was all for it, and I was lucky. Well, the pleasures are the peace and tranquility. Um, we might not see anybody for days, and it's fantastic, as far as I'm concerned. That's, that's how it should be in these parts of the, of the world. The walkers are taking an ancient path known as the Monk's Trod. The Monk's Trod was already very old when, hundreds of years ago, it was walked by Cistercian monks. They used it to cross the 24 odd miles of empty mountainside between two major Cistercian abbeys. Gloria. This is one of them. Abbey come here. Once it had the largest nave of any monastery in Wales. It rivalled Canterbury Cathedral in scale. It was a seat of power and the burial place of the great Welsh leader, Prince Llewellyn. The walkers are aiming for the other monastery, Strata Florida, along the ancient path. What is quite remarkable about it is how much of it we can still see. Because it is in the uplands of, of um, the Cambrian Mountains, the A470 went round it, the A44 went through it, and nothing has actually gone over the top of this fa fantastic path. So for me, just like today in the background, we can hear the skylark singing behind us. This is like the memory bank of the history of this place, and it's there for us to pick up on now, and you can walk up here for... Well, I've walked up here for seven hours and never heard a motorised vehicle. The odd aircraft may be going past, but you are in a motorised vehicle-free world. So to experience that much tranquillity in the 21st century, I find really inspirational. And I know many people who, who have touched on it and maybe walked all of it and really gained something very, very special. Where are we going in the future with this landscape? Ancient as the landscape is, it is not untouched by modern times. There are forces at work that may change the mountains forever, that may shape a very different mountainside. 
not just large schemes, but other, apparently smaller intrusions. There was pressure sort of towards the end of the um, 70s and early 80s to let motorised vehicles use this route because there are all these ancient routes that, yes, in the past they would have had carts and so it was sort of extrapolated that this was OK then to have motorised vehicles which is really a very, very different use and you can see the impact in a lot of the area of the Monks Trod where motorised vehicles have really damaged it very deeply and they're, they're quite scars into our history. It's not just four-wheeled motor vehicles. These scars on the soil were inflicted by the many groups of motorbikers who have discovered the Cambrian Mountains. This is still winter. In high summer they come in their hundreds. Well, there are uh problem we are seeing, my you were um, four by fours are uh, motorbikes and the see them I mean are um the land of uh uh calru sport of Nadu in Ada Hax or they are uh dim and uh dim respect at uh them being never what man on uh on women grade we clearly body them back away like before the other way board. Man, I guess we mamma no go bovi man the way. And um well harass uh main resumolo the hair ma on my bushy garo well my. Or so you do hit him a back or 